Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of Austria. Yeah, no Germany at this time. Dortmund is now in the lead, but uh, let's wait for it for next week if we if this trend does continue. But we are only talking Austria because again the family were in the stadium in the biggest game personally and emotionally for me. Lask against Rapid and it ended exactly the way I wanted with a thoroughly deserved 3-1 win. For Lask in an overall very interesting round in Austria, uh, where there were some direct duels in the relegation fight, there were some uh, head-to-heads in the Europa fight, and of course for the championship as well. So uh, rather, rather exciting round. Uh, but the win for Rapid was only the first step to a rather perfect weekend for me, because as we will talk in the uh Serie A review video which we'll post tomorrow Milan also won and this is the rare thing they play on the same day and it's six points couldn't be happier honestly but yeah uh we had another outing with the family uh going up to the brand new stadium and this time although it was rather rather tricky with the weather weather wise because the day before it was glorious weather for the first time this April um it's kind of there was a rain in the cards and you know in the morning it's kind of fresh it was a 2 30 uh kickoff so you know it's getting a little bit bit, bit warmer but with the threat of rain and uh, wind how do you dress well i think we were erring on the side of overdressing but you know it's not the worst thing that you can do in such unstable weather <laughs> over overall uh it did not rain one single bit and it was overall really nice weather and we also learned that our seats now yeah at 2 30 at the beginning they're not not nice sun, but a little bit in into the game we are fully in the sun even if it's just just, just inside so i had my cap and so on and um i might have a little burn here but i don't think i think i just escaped that one so good on me there <laughs> uh but yeah um of course, with Rapid, there are many fans coming. It was the second time that they didn't have the upper uh, tier all tarped over. Uh, only two sec sections that were tarped over. Um, and so I think it was overall uh, over 17,000, 17,600, which means kind of 2,000 short of full capacity. Again, I don't quite get uh, why it's only 2,000, because when you look at it, there were the two tarped over sections. But again, on the main stand, uh, the two sections next to the uh, field, they were all empty again. And uh, I think this is all sponsors that have their tickets there and they don't uh, get the people there. Or they're just still whining and dining at the business club, which is yeah very spiffy and very uh, nice for many. So yeah, uh, that is probably the one, the one thing that still bothers me in the new stadium quite a bit um however rapid always bring a bunch of fans so you have full full away section uh who of course when they started uh they the game gives out of course they had lots of flares uh and the rapid vienna fans you know they always said the pyrotechnics are not a crime and they are mainly behind that so when of course the announcement came that you have to um you should not do that we want to have a fair uh competition between two teams which i find so ridiculous and they of course enchanted pyrotechnic is pyrotechnics is not a crime uh and yeah that was uh, it was interesting uh they also had a very interesting choreography uh up there where then they uh, pulled in some confetti in in there which kind of came all over us yeah whatever uh on the last side um i already have said a little bit of that in a pre previous video unfortunately the relationship between the fan groups and the club at the moment are at the lowest level it has been for years which is so annoying because it's entirely it entirely doesn't need to be this should be a season to celebrate we have a new stadium the team is playing well and there are these mistones and you know it has been long for because of the pink jerseys and while i get it you know sometimes just let it be in a way i it was too to the degree where i thought i should have maybe a dedicated lask channel <laughs> on youtube although i think i might expose myself too much so uh take it for what it is in any case i i find the communication from the side of the club but also the communication from the side of the fans 
is rather lacking and in addition i find there is no uh, they the, the sides mutually do not understand each other and i think do not want to understand each other. the latest was that you know uh the uh, the issue with the ticketing that for the first game we couldn't get tickets and now the ticket prices are way too high uh again i understand that if you buy a season ticket yes this is an outlay but it is really 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 reasonably priced especially if you have a family like we we do seven games for 230 euros for four people is a really really good deal because you spend the same thing if you go like uh, for one game uh, for uh, you almost spent uh, 60, 80 or whatever if you want to go the two of you. Uh, so that is their model because they want to put asses in their seats. And the best way to do it is to have attractive prices with season tickets. And the fans, yeah, I understand that maybe you don't wanna, uh, you would, would like to have some uh, more reasonably priced uh, tickets, but you know the stadium also needs to pay for for, uh, for itself. And at the moment, the stadium is rather full. So I mean, uh, there was never uh, the the lowest I think was uh, around twelve thousand, which was on Easter Sunday, which is a rather bad day. So for that, I think. The club was right. Where the club was not right is that they, um, like in the old stadium, they allow the fan uh, club, the main fan club, uh, to have their own uh, stand for selling f uh, goods, well, you know, um, scarves and all those kind of things. Um, and they were not allowed to do so. Then they made a protest action at the last home game where they just put up a fake stand and said why is there no stand and then the club comes can you please remove this because other otherwise two people in our uh, we will be fired which also is completely ridiculous and then there was a fan meeting where uh, it did not go well because uh, the club didn't wanna uh, listen to the fans in a way the, uh, the, the guy who is responsible for cl uh, club fan interaction and I think it's all down to the president being a little bit too much uh, focused on the business side and maybe his pride is a little bit, um, how to say, his ego did not get, get massaged enough. I think this is probably the best way to put it. And so uh, they put up two big banners. The first one where they, the whole uh, standing section was blacked out with black um, signs and said, Einsam said ihr Lask, so you are uh, Lask alone, quest, 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 question mark, and then gemeinsam sind wir Lask, which means together we are Lask. Okay, it's a statement. I don't think it will do anything to improve things. But let's get away from the mistons and let's talk about the match because this was potentially the best performance of Lusk this season, especially in the first half. Yes, I have to say there's a caveat. There were uh, two or three players, namely Burgstaller for Rapid, missing at the uh, in the game. So their lineup was maybe not the strongest one. However, whatever they planned and came out to do, they couldn't do it. Lusk was pressing the life out of them. They could get no hold of the game. Lusk playing absolutely gor gor gorgeously and I have to say the first goal already was so, uh, I, I think the ball came from Mus Musva to Renner who then uh, wants to make a cross in, slips but still falls so perfectly to Schul who finds himself free in front of the goal where we were, we were sitting, takes it down and then yanks it through the goalie in the internet to make it 1-0 and a few minutes later a wonderful comp community, this would have been one, one of the best goals that we have scored this season. Um, the ball comes to her who cuts back. Schul again on the end, at the end of it, it sees it saved. And there was really a period then uh, between the 10th and the 50th minute where, where Rapid could not even get out of their own half in, in, a, in, in, in a way. Um, then for a short while, uh, the game kind of slowed a little bit down still. Uh, Rapid canning not not much to do, to, to do, but then it took a right turn again when Mustafa presses high up on Bayic, uh, who plays it into Schul, who then elegantly puts it into net, and then it should have been more, because just a, mi a minute later, a, a, a cross calm comes in, Mustafa is like two meters away from goal, open net, 
yes, he's under pressure, but he manages to pull it over the bar. And then a minute later again, Shul uh, cannot connect rightly again. Open it, he could have pulled it. Uh, you Gaga said also two, two, two chances that probably at least one of them has. has going. You go the 3-0 into the half and you know it's all safe. I mean, it came as it had to come. I mean, um, they uh, Ra Rapid made two changes um, uh, to kind of get a little bit more hold of, of the game. And then they actually were pressing. Uh, had very early, early chance and then a nice uh, cross by hour was... Put into the net with the Roy from kind of at the penalty spot area with the outside off of his foot. Of course, I was got it by half. They said it was a really, really nice goal. Uh, you know, one of those where you say, hmm, yeah, that looks good. And then I uh, could have gotten even worse because there was a, a very iffy situation where Goli Schlager got injured. However, I don't deny that he was knocked out, but he was lying there. And that's the one thing, if you feel under pressure, you just take your time. And then there was another uh, ish, uh, injury uh, stuff lay, lay, lay down for Lask. Just a few minutes later, I mean, it uh, took like five minutes for goal, goalish Lager to get back, back in the game with another player. For Lask did the same thing, and it kind of broke the rhythm of the game. Then the game was kind of applauding along until um, Ljubicic in the 64th came on, immediately had a chance, and then, really at that point, uh, Lask could gain control of the game uh, again. And then our joker, I call him now Flekinio, Florian Flecker, uh, comes on, uh, and whenever he came on, this gives the team another lift, and it was in this way that uh, it was a nice pass played, I think, on to uh, Schul, who then takes it outside. Ljubi Ljubi shoots, ball falls to Stojkovic, who has been incessantly cheered by Rapid fans because his exit from Rapid was not that pretty. He kind of uh, forced it and he gets his revenge and makes it 3-1. That's the game. Uh, I think there were not many chances thereafter, but it was a rather, rather impressive and really good performance by Lusk. Uh, and now you have a rather comfy cushion, as we'll see at the end, in the table on repeat. That's all you needed. But let's talk also some other results from the Austrian Bundesliga. Um, let's start in the relegation round up there, uh, where Hartberg, who are relegation, they had a 2 0 lead in Wolfsburg. Uh, Wolfsburg late pulled it back to 2 2. Reed, who in last place, and Altach is one of the teams that they're fighting with. So it's Hartberg, uh, Reed, and Altach. Had a 1-0 lead through Chabi, however, again, Nuhio, and I think he played at the Reed not too long ago, gets an equalizer, so uh, kind of a stalemate there. Uh, stalemate in the, in the interrogation round, however, for the top, top spot, where Tirol is kind of the favorite, now they lose at home to Luster now, who are having a really good run again. You know, they had a very, really good start to the season, then it was kind of plodding along, uh, they even fell out of the... Uh, pro, uh, the um, championship round, but now they might actually make it into, into Europa League playoffs. Um, interesting scene in Vienna, uh, where Austria Vienna did not have kids to walk out with, with the players, but truck drivers to kind of put awareness uh, onto that, you know, A, we are your friends on the, on the road, and B, uh, we need truck drivers. Uh, but it was really funny to look at some, you know, uh, let's say heavier dudes walking out with the players. Was an interesting scene, let's put, put, put it that way. Uh, Austria Werner had probably more of the game, um, but couldn't convert and get us. Uh, scores an early goal, immediately equalized by Gruber, Austria pressing, however, in the last minute of the game, then kind of uh, peed pee it out, and then a penalty uh, that initially was not given, but it was, was a clear foul, gets, us, gets a win, first win for Klangfurt in the championship round, so uh, kind of them getting closer to Austria, and Austria are not getting gaining any traction in there. We talked all about Rapid's uh, loss at Lusk, so both Vienna teams are losing, and then it was all about the big game. Sturm Graz, a point behind Sal Salzburg, a win would mean that they are in first place. Uh, fever pitch, and the weather actually told the story, because at the beginning it was all sunshine and warmth, and then there came the big thunderstorm and tears from the Sturm fans, because for once Salzburg showed up. It was not a game that had many chances, however, it was always Salzburg who were fairly in control of the game. Sturm could not get in there, 
and they just had to wait for errors. And uh, if you have a chance to see the first goal by uh, Capaldo, it was Koita who has the ball. There are, I think, eight Sturm players in the box. Everyone looking at the ball. No one seeing Capaldo in the back. No one crossing the pass line. And Koita basically puts it just parallel uh, to Capaldo who then double nutmegs in one shot. It was a brilliant shot. Makes it 1-0. And then a little bit later, Konate cross Sheshko, takes it down with his left foot and then out of the air with the right foot converts in 73rd minute. A brilliant goal. Kind of showing that Salzburg is still the class of the league, um, despite having had some wobbles, but they are. They kind of reaffirmed themselves. So... With all that, we have now the Austrian table. Salzburg, five points ahead of Sturm, who are three points ahead of Lusk, who are seven points ahead of Rapid. Austria went 19, Klagenfurt 18 points, so it's rather tight on the bottom, but it seems one, two, three are kind of settled at the moment. Um, in the qualification round, we have Lustenau, Tirol uh, are still on, on top. Lustenau are rather, rather... Um, Comfy there, and then uh, rele relegation. It's still Reed who needed the points. Hartberg and Altach um, are just a step ahead of them, um, and we see this also in the expected. Now, uh, the interesting thing was that before four four is around between th it was between third and fourth. Lask and Rapid who will get uh, that spot, and now you can see there's a clear cut, and it's Lask have a small chance to make second space a, a place. But on the, honestly, I don't really. Think see it coming and on the bottom uh, Reed looks like they're down um, and as I said the qualification round will be an interesting one um, let's look at the upcoming round because it's an interesting uh, uh, one in the sense that the championship round there are two games that are already played on Wednesday and they are actually rather um, how say dicey games not uh, necessarily for, for, for the league but because of the fans Sturm against Austria and Rapid against Salzburg uh, play on Wednesday. Why? Because on Sunday, you see on, on the other side, there's the cup final between uh, Sturm and Rapid. Um, on the top, when we look at the relegation fight, uh, every, every relegation candidate plays one of the top top candidates and last play on Sunday. We will be most likely there again against Klagenfurt, hopefully for another three points. Uh, and then in the evening, of course, there's the cup final, uh, completely sold out stadium in Klagenfurt, which doesn't happen very often, but those are the two biggest fan groups at the moment. And I really hope that Sturm is going to just do that one because it would be very, very good for Lusk as well. So they have my full support there. So that was it from me from Austria, a little bit of longer video, but I think it was a really interesting round, of course. I had to talk about the game uh, uh, and our experience as well. As always, the girls did enjoy it quite some. My wife too. My wife is really was really in awe of how well Lask played. So also cool. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.